Can you believe we're finally here? I finally made it to the dish. I don't know whether you can get an idea of scale, but this thing, you probably can't on film. This thing is massive. This is huge. I really want to see it move. I really want to see it move. I really want to see it move. It's not moving yet. Good morning folks, welcome again to Moorabbin Airport. Really excited because you know what today is. I've been talking about it for months, so of course you know what today is. Today is day one, the official first flying day of our trip to Longreach. So the plane's been pre-flighted. I've uh, just had a quick chat with my instructor and we've just gone through the weather and made sure that everything's okay. Fuel on board, everything else is on board. Cameras are ready to go. I suppose there's no point delaying it anymore. Let's get Tango Delta Sierra started up. And let's go to parks. Tango Delta Sierra, ready, three five right, departure via Harrow. Tango Delta Sierra, line up. Line up, Tango Delta Sierra. Clear for takeoff, Tango Delta Sierra. And here we go, so full power. Lots of right rudder. Temperatures and pressures are green. Airspeed is coming up. Right for circuit two. 60 mega whiskey, X-ray, right 70 knots, right side. Approach Tango Delta Sierra passing 2,500, climbing 5,000. Tango Delta Sierra approach, good day, identified, climb to 7,000, the Melbourne QNH 1019. Climb 7,000, 1019, Tango Delta Sierra. I don't know what to say. Get your instrument rating, folks, if you haven't already got it. Do everything you can to work hard to get your instrument rating because this, this is beautiful, look at this. Well, flying's always a fun thing, isn't it folks? We are about 40 minutes into the trip and I've ascertained that the autopilot is doing some interesting things. It's holding our wings level, so it's following the GPS part, but I'm not getting the altitude hold on the autopilot every time I try and get the altitude hold. There's a pitch up movement. Autopilot ready. So let's do nav nav. And come on baby, give me the altitude hold. Aubrey Tower, Sango Delta Sierra approaching Lutfu from the south, 7000. Request clearance tracking to Wagga via Aubrey at 7000. Tango Delta Sierra, clear to track Aubrey Wagga 7000, QNH 1019. Clear Aubrey Wagga 7000, 1019er, Tango Delta Sierra. And just a quick update on the autopilot situation. We've still got the GPS track being held correctly, which is good, but no altitude holding, so I'm just holding it manually at the moment. What I've decided to do is to continue on to parks, because it's a pretty good day today, uh, and I know that if I'm going to get to parks and then maybe have to turn around, I know that I can either fly back this afternoon or stay overnight and fly back tomorrow, because the weather's pretty good tomorrow as well. It's not ideal, but I can still do this trip with the setup I have at the moment, it just means that the autopilot won't hold the altitude. I'll just need to be a lot more on top of that. So 
I can still do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going now, head to Parks, land at Parks. I think I'll spend the afternoon there and I will stay overnight at Parks, because that was always part of the plan anyway. And then speak to the guys at maintenance, see if there's any troubleshooting I could do on the ground, and then make a decision what's going to happen with the journey. Just about to come up on Albury now, which is the border between Victoria and New South Wales, which will be our first new state on the trip. Tango Delta Sierra is overhead Albury, estimate Wagga time 08. Parks traffic, Cirrus um, IFR Tango Delta Sierra is 10 miles to the southwest. Inbound on descent passing 3,400, estimate Parks time 06. Parks. Parks traffic, Tango Delta Sierra on final runway 04, full stop, Parks. It's a dirt strip. Well, you can how to tell you're at a country airport. The taxiway is made of dirt. What's next? Look at this cockpit. I need to tidy this up. That's what's next. I think, I think that's everything. Windshield's on, uh, chocks are on, aircraft secured, everything's off, switches are all off, keys are out, flaps are up. I think we're all done. I think Tango Delta Sierra, you've done your job today. That's it. Quick wash, everything is good. Now, off to the dish. Whoa. Those are two very important signs. Make sure your mobile phones are turned off and beware of snakes. Now, I don't know whether you can get an idea of scale um, from what you're seeing on the film here at the moment, but this is huge. It's way bigger than I thought it was. I've wanted to come here for a long time. I'm really interested in the role that Australia had to play in the Apollo 11 moon mission. And hopefully I'm gonna have a chat with someone who works here at the dish uh, about that exact moon mission, about the Apollo 11 trip and what Australia did in terms of helping that mission go ahead. But this is fascinating. When was the dish built? Okay, well the, the, the CSIRO's Parks Radio Telescope was um, commissioned back in October 1961 mm. and when it was built it was the second largest but most advanced radio telescope in the world. Parks Telescope is first and foremost a radio astronomy observatory where our job is to study the radio emissions from the stars. But even before the telescope's construction was completed, NASA realised that it was a near ideal instrument for tracking spacecraft in deep space. So for Apollo 11 when the, when the moonwalk began and Buzz Aldrin switched on the television camera that was on, mounted on the outside of the lunar module, we received the signal simultaneously with our colleagues at Honeysuckle Creek and, and Goldstone. And the moonwalk began just minutes before 
it was to raise for us. So we thought we wouldn't get it. But Armstrong had taken his time to come out and, and so on. So the, when just as the moon was about to rise, Buzz Aldrin switched on the TV camera. And so we picked it, we received the signal simultaneously with them. So thanks to, to Parks, the world saw the, the moonwalk with the greatest possible clarity. Such a fantastic event. Um, 600 million people, one fifth of mankind at the time were, were watching it. Well, so we have a great visitor center, so if anyone who sees this video would like to come along, you're more than willing to come along. You can see how close you get to the dish. Well, I'll tell you what, so I'll definitely, and thank you, John, I'll definitely put together, um, I'll put the links to your website down, yeah. The, but yeah, definitely come down and visit. It's an awesome place to visit. And John, thank you very much for your time. It's a great pleasure. No worries, it's a pleasure. Now, I'm just heading back from the dish, and um, I've, I actually got... I got way more information from that trip than I was actually expecting to. I thought it might just be a really brief two minute chat, a couple of shots of the dish and that was it. But I've been in there for about an hour and they're doing all sorts of cool stuff in there. And like they're searching for aliens for goodness sake. I mean, it's really, really cool. So I don't think it's going to do it justice just to squeeze all that content into this vlog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a full version of the trip around the dish. Um, and I'll edit that together and put it up on this channel and I'll link to it from this vlog below So if you're watching this vlog the day it comes out that probably won't be ready But if you're watching this a few days later, I'll try and edit it and, and get it out so you can watch it too. All right back to the hotel So just finishing up for the night been looking at the weather for tomorrow. It's still looking pretty good There's that big high coming across Australia. So might actually do the next leg VFR. I'm still not sure. I'll check the weather again in the morning and if it looks pretty good, might just file VFR. But we're off to Charleville in Queensland, but we're going to refuel in Walgett, Walgett, Walgett along the way. So yeah, I'm going to get some sleep and get some rest. But thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this first leg. Uh, give us a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. And you can follow along with the daily vlogs as I'm flying my way up to Longreach and back. Thanks as always for watching, like I say, and I'll see you tomorrow.